Season 19, Blood Token Army Instructional Series Part 2. If you're running into an unusual amount of paladins, you could try substituting the Tusker Totomics for a it, one Tusker Totomic for one Blood Knight and see if that works for you. Now, I personally don't really tech cards that much anymore. I used to tech cards uh, before the Grand Tournament came out, but I don't tech cards anymore. And I'll tell you why later. Uh, the mulligans for this deck are usually simple. You look for your 1, 2, and 3 drops. This is a perfect example of some things you would keep. Uh, one thing that is interesting to know is you even keep Flame Tongue Totem. If you, even if that was the only 2 drop you could nail, that's fine. Uh, it counts as a minion just like these. Because you have to plan on turning your uh, hero power totems into attacking minions. Now, we're not going to coin out Echo Ooze. That's uh, rarely a play we would make. The only time I ever would even consider coining out Echo Ooze is maybe if you're against a mage and you can coin this out and have Flame Tongue Totem in your hand. Uh, oh, wait. I, what I mean to say is you usually don't coin this out when you have a zombie chill. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, we'll play this, play the Echo Ooze double. Man, my screen is really having some problems. So, we'll start here. And even knowing full well, by the way, that the chances were it was a um, a, a, a um, trap, explosive trap, I don't care. I'm going to push for it anyway. And the reason why is because, let's face it, that's going to proc off later, sooner or later anyway. It's just going to proc, okay? So, whatever, okay? Uh, Pilot Shredder. In this particular case, we're going to ignore the 4-3 and just put pressure. Because he, see, his back is up against the wall more than ours. Because we're drawing cards with this. We have the 3-2, which is starting to hit too hard for him to ignore. We have the 4-3. It's just turned to too much. And that's one of his most powerful combinations, this I wouldn't have done that if I were him. Because if uh, a unstable came out or like some kind of taunt, he would be so screwed. So I wouldn't have done that. <clears throat> but he teached his own. Uh, okay, so now we make the taunts that w uh, the taunts. We make the trades that we must make. But first, well, let's look at the board and see if there's anything we really need to do. First, let's identify what kind of deck. Well, he's running this, which means it's a control deck, mid-range control. And we only have two silences. Hmm. So a high main could come next turn. What we're going to do, we could run... This and that. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is apply pressure in this way. This. And then we're going to also uh, do these trades here, actually. Now, I like this because we put too much threats for him to ignore. We make it inefficient for him to do any of these trades. And if he does play a high main... Um, okay. Okay.
Okay. Mm -hmm. I will never understand Sh uh, Hunter's running that card. Like, he's been quite fortunate, though. But whatever. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. What, what we'd like to do is just go ahead and um, use all the... Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take out the um, the juggler because it's the most dangerous unit. Play this because it's stickiness. And play uh, Totem Golem because that's providing a lot of stats to the board and we want to get a lot of stats. We don't have to be too worried right now because that's not a lot of damage he has. And since we know he's not a face deck, uh, we don't have to worry about an insane amount of burst like, you know just what do you call it arcane golem out of nowhere and stuff pretty soon we're gonna be the ones putting a lot of pressure so uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to uh, leave the one for because that stifles his own dr. boom play could potentially we're going to hex this but uh, first we're gonna make any necessary trades so uh, okay yeah. all right got it we're going here We're going here. We're hexing this. We're going here. And we're just going to leave like that. Actually, you know what? Learn from my mistake. I'll tell you what I should have done. Put the flame tongue, apply more pressure. Because it had the most stats. But it's okay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Perhaps. I should have done that. Mm hmm. Anyways. Uh, now is a good time for us. Let's see. Five, six, seven. We can't do willpower. Mm -hmm. Five hero power. Play Windlord. Yeah, I really messed up, guys. Like, like I really messed up, like really bad by not playing the um the uh that flame tongue. So, like, really note that I really, really, really messed up there. We would be in such a better position if it weren't for that shit. Whatever. Okay. Man. Yes. All right. Uh, so, okay. First things first. I have to be delicate. He's got damage uh, quite a bit. All right. So first things first. Brilliant. This. It's fine. Have to uh, have to do this. And must do this now. <clears throat> and there's a good reason for that. Because we 
are probably not going to use that for control. We know we're going his face. And I don't want to end up one mana short. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. Whoa. Yeah, we almost lost this because I just made like a bad just a bad timing with that flame tongue. It's just like embarrassing to me. And then we had to end it with style. Strong totem. Uh, well played. Yeah, learn from... See, that's why we do these instructional series. So that you can see the, the mistakes I make as well as the good plays. And I'm going to marker that turn in the description. Uh, this deck performs relatively well against Hunter. Even though Hunter, I'm going to tell you right now, Hunter is a natural predator of the Shaman. Like, it's set up the clash just to beat up Shaman. But as much as we can, this deck does defend pretty well against Face Hunter. And deals pretty well with Midrange Hunter, provided uh, you both get some reasonable draws. So, that's um, part two of the instructional series. Thanks for watching, and make sure to catch part three.